Hi, welcome back to this video series on cryptography. Today I will make a brief demo regarding the frequency of English letters. Uh, many crypto analysis techniques leverage frequency occurrence patterns, or like meaning how many times A occurs, B occurs, and so on, and try to make use of that uh, during crypto analysis. So my goal is to, to briefly show you a little Python implementation that you could use to understand how uh, English alphabets are distributed. So I will be taking a small piece of text and just measure the occurrence of each uh, English alphabet letters like A through Z, okay? And I'm going to exclude things like comma, dots, and other non-alphabetic characters. So, all right, so uh, that is the plan for uh, the next few minutes. So I'll, I'll just start showing you the code directly. It's not much code. Um, I will just share the demo to you directly, okay? What you're seeing is a small Python implementation that I put together as a proof of concept. Um, the program takes, um, the, the function uh, takes a string as an input. Uh, it is called generate frequency uh, for English. That's basically the gen frequency English uh, method name or function name. And uh, it's going to generate a frequency table. The frequency table means uh, each letter and how many times that particular letter uh, occurred in this particular string, input string. So as you can see, it's not that much code here. Um, initially, the frequency table is empty and we check the length. If the length of the string is empty or, or zero, uh, we say uh, the, the frequency table is empty because there's not much to, to analyze anyways. Uh, we normalize the uppercase and lowercase because we, we usually treat upper and lowercase the same when we do frequency analysis. And uh, then we go through each character in the input string uh, we, we check whether the character is between A and C inclusive. If it is not, we say we will ignore that. That's basically the reason for the this part of the code, okay? And uh, otherwise, we know that this is a valid alphabet character. We check whether we already saw this character C in the frequency table. If it is, uh, we increment the frequency by one. Otherwise, we know this is the first time we encountered this character. We set the frequency to be one, okay? And when this loop is over, we counted how many times each character occurs uh, in this given string. Okay, that's basically it. Uh, okay, so how do we test this? Um, you can you can write um, test programs if you want, but I'm going to just show you one simple uh, paragraph of text that uh, I took it from the internet, right? And I also just uh, wrote some more text on my own, for example, things like this I wrote, uh, which is not that important for this demo, but um, what is the point is to, to show to you that uh, given a string like this, right, we can see uh, the frequency of each English letter. Okay, so once you get the frequency table, uh, we skim through all the thing, all the values through a. This means uh, a, right? Capital A. This is uh, range function means you run through 65 from 65 through 90. Okay, and the 91 is not part of it. Meaning you are basically going through a to z, okay? inclusive, and um, we we uh, look into the frequency table whether the character occurred in our text. If if it is we will print the character and the frequency table um, measurement. Okay, that's basically it. And let me now run this thing. Okay, let's sort it using the sort command, right? Based on the second column. Okay, what you see here is pretty fascinating. E occurs most frequently in our um, in our paragraph of uh, test test case string, and then comes T, um, then is uh, yes R and so on. But what is interesting is that there is there's a there's a quick drop in terms of the frequency, right? You can see here uh, the most frequent ones is clearly standing out. E, T, yes, or, or or until yes, most frequently occurring ones. But maybe in another test case, the 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 numbers might change a bit. But it is it is in general agreement with the empirical's observations on large texts. Um, one thing I, I wanted to highlight though is that in in some other uh, texts. Uh, a was coming earlier than yes, so it's not that you can take this as a theorem or something like that. It's just empirical evidence from one data point. But if you try this program uh, on multiple um, input strings, you will see that uh, uh, E, T, and A turned out to be most frequently occurring um, letters in, in, in a paragraph of text. Okay, so you can try in on large text. Maybe you can increase the size of the string and uh, add more meaningful text and then study the frequency. The reason why I'm showing you is this, that uh, if you are using something like substitution cipher, um, each character is getting replaced by a corresponding other character. Um, by using the idea of frequency analysis, 
the crypto analysts may be able to reverse your, your plain text from the cipher text. That's what I talked about in the previous segment when I introduced the substitution cipher. And in this segment, I have just shown you how we can easily measure the frequency of uh, characters. Although it's in English here, uh, you can easily adapt this for other languages. Okay, maybe this, this portion of the code has to be changed. Um, and that's basically it, right? And, and also here, because they, I assume here A through Z. So, and of course you need to have the language specific string here. Okay, but this general structure remains the same. All right, that's basically it. Thank you for your attention.